If I remember correctly, said Nico, the first time I met Will was during a battle. Which one? Will narrowed his eyes. He still looked so weak and tired. Oh, wait, was it when Octavian's faction attacked the camp? Uh, no, said Nico. Wasn't that only like a little over a year ago? We've known each other a lot longer than that. Oh, Will rubbed his face. Sorry, you're right. Nico felt another twinge of concern. Is your memory getting worse? Will grunted, but did not answer the question. You were around before that, he said hazily. Long before. Back around the time when... When the Battle of Manhattan? Nico smiled. Yeah, I was. I wasn't staying at Camp Half-Blood much, though. I remember that. And even when you were at camp, it was so hard to pin you down. You wouldn't stay put. You were afraid. Afraid of getting close to anyone. Nico was silent for a moment. Sometimes I still am, he said. Like earlier, when you were complaining that I wasn't telling you things? Sort of. Will pressed his hand against his stomach. I don't know if I was being fair to you. That's not important now, said Nico. Let's get through this. I hope you do not feel that I am something to get through, said Gorgira. I'm, I am not trying to make things difficult for you boys. For a moment, Nico had forgotten the nymph was there. He tried to tamp down his fear and frustration, his urge to scream, just let us go. It's a trade, right? He said, we give you our story and you give us a boat. If you must see it that way, she said. Yes, I remember. Will coughed softly and Nico ran his hand over his boyfriend's back. His eyes traveled down to the gauze on Will's leg. It was completely soaked through with blood. What do you remember? Gorgira asked. Remember how sad I was when you left to go find Percy, Will said to Nico. When he disappeared, you were sad? But did we even know each other then? Maybe not as close friends or anything, but but I was drawn to you. Maybe it was because you were so mysterious. Maybe it was because you kept pushing everyone away when they tried to be your friend. Not a lot of people tried to be my friend in those days, said Nico. That's not true, said Will, and for a moment his energy seemed to come back. Plenty of us tried to be friendly to you, and you always had an excuse or a mean remark ready for us. That doesn't sound like me, Nico said, trying to play a deadpan, but Will gave him a stern look. Nico laughed. Okay, okay, fine. Maybe that sounds like me. We met way before the Battle of Manhattan, actually, said Will, leaning against Nico. You, you came into the big house, remember? What? Nico scratched at his head. When was this? Back when I was still training to be a field medic with Michael Yu. Will fell silent, unable to finish, and that's when the fragment of the memory came back to Nico. The sword fight, he said. I'd only been at camp a couple of days. Karen had me training with the other campers, and I went too hard. You sliced your own leg, said Will, smiling weakly. If I remember correctly, you missed the target dummy completely because you were arguing with Karen. I love that you seem to remember all the most embarrassing moments of my life, said Nico. Way to go, Will. I only remember that because of what came after. The part that's more striking was you. In the big house, you wouldn't sit still, and Michael was barking commands at you because you were bleeding everywhere, and, and you calmed me down, said Nico, and the image bloomed in his mind. A young Will Solace, his blonde hair bushy and slightly unkempt, holding Nico's legs still, Will's blue eyes boring into his own. At least I tried, said Will. I don't think it worked. It did, said Nico, even if it was only for a moment. I was a little difficult when I was younger. Will grinned. Oh, only when you were younger? Shut up. That's news to me. You've never been difficult since. Nico shifted uneasily. He glanced over at the old nymph, who was studying the two of them with a wistful look. So is that it, Will? Nico asked. Is that really how we met? I think so. 
I'm pretty sure I saw you running around Camp Half-Blood when you were originally rescued by Percy and Annabeth, but that was our first face-to-face -face moment. Nico shook his head. I didn't even realize that was you back then. But, well, I also don't remember much about my first few weeks at the camp. I felt so out of place. Gorgira sighed. It seems you two have had complicated and labyrinthine connection. Would really love to never think about a labyrinth ever again, Nico muttered. She smiled. I find this fascinating. Sometimes mortals are not aware of the threads that bind them. You could both be wrong about the first time you met, and yet the two of you have orbited each other for so long, like heavenly bodies in the sky. Will squeezed Nico's hand. I like how that sounds. Nico studied Will's broken fingernails, the cuts on his knuckles. He certainly felt like he was spinning through space, like he would go shooting off into the void if it weren't for Will's gravity. Well, Nico said at last, maybe we don't remember the first time we actually met, but I do remember when I considered you a friend. Tell me, Gorgira said. Nico heard the yearning in her voice, insatiable, like the three-headed dog Cerberus begging for bones. Just one more, just one more. Nico worried Gorgira would keep demanding stories, pulling on string after string until their whole lives were unraveled at her feet. Nevertheless, he wanted to talk about it. He looked into Will's tired blue eyes when he spoke, not Gorgira's. It was at camp, after, after Octavian, when he, you know. Will's face dropped. Nico knew he hated that memory when Nico and Michael Kahale had allowed Octavian to launch himself to his own death. I remember. We had defeated Gaia. You were standing in the doorway of your cabin. Will laughed softly. I remember that too. I think I scolded you pretty hard. You did, confirmed Nico. But it was the way you did it. You made it clear that you wanted me around. You said you wanted me to come to the infirmary and help because, because you could use a friendly face. It was true, and you did help. You brought me closer instead of rejecting me, Nico said, his voice cracking. I'd never been called a friendly face, ever. You made me rethink everything. My place in Hank camp, my crush on Percy, my future. It took you scolding me like you were the camp director to make me realize that I was wanted. Gorgira sniffled, then wiped her eyes. You'll have to excuse me she said. It's hard not to react to something like that. Will swayed, and Nico studied him. You okay? asked Nico. This place, he said. I'm so tired. I know, Nico said, watching apprehensively as the blood seeped across the gauze bindings on Will's leg. He turned to Gorgira. We need to go if we're going to reach Tartarus. Wait, said Will. I remember something else. I know we need to go, but... You remember what Percy and Annabeth said about how important it is to remind each other of the world above? Nico frowned. But we're not even in Tartarus yet. It feels like we are, said Will. And I know you're worried, but just give me this. It does make me feel better. Nico gazed at Gorgira, and the whispers in his mind returned, voices telling him what he already knew about himself all his worst fears and failures. All right, he said to Will, if it helps. That brought back a bit of color into Will's face. I remember when I realized, when I knew that this was more than a friendship. That made Nico smile despite himself. I remember my moment too. Will's eyes filled with tears. I think mine is different than yours, but I know mine happened first, Nico said. Tell me. Gorgira said, moving closer to Nico and Will. Tell me one more story. And Nico felt another string starting to unravel. Chapter 9. Nico rushed to Will and pulled him to his feet. Are you okay? What happened? Will dusted himself off. I suddenly felt sleepy, like I hadn't slept in a million years. Then he looked around. Uh, Nico? Why are we back in Central Park? I don't know he admitted. It shouldn't be possible. And yet he could hear leaves rustling in the wind and the distant sound of traffic. But we went down all those steps, said Will. Like, twice. 
Maybe you are right, Nico said. Maybe my father is preventing us from going into the underworld somehow. He walked up to the massive rocks that made up the door of Orpheus. He placed his hand on them. They felt very real, rough, solid, and cool to the touch. Can you try to open this again? Will shook himself like a wet dog. Just trying to wake up. He approached the door and began humming the same melody as before. Slowly, the schist rumbled and split apart, revealing the dank, dark steps again. Will plugged his nose. I don't think I'll ever get used to that smell. Nico held his purple glowing sword in front of him as he led the way down the steps. As before, the door closed behind them, filling the space with terrible silence. We're going to have to do this all over, aren't we? said Will. I'm already so tired. It doesn't make sense, said Nico, descending. I've never had anything like this happen before, which makes me think it isn't Hades. He wouldn't toy with us like this. Will gave him a skeptical look. Then what is it? he asked. Is there something or someone is there someone or something else that could make this happen in the underworld? Nico sighed. Are you asking me if there are terrible creatures who can do awful things to us down there? Sure. But I don't know if you really want me to list them all. He turned to face Will, but Will wasn't there. Nico stared at the empty space behind him. No Will, no stairway, no tunnel, just darkness. I'm right here, said Will. Nico jumped. Will was, in fact, standing in front of him, exactly where he hadn't been a moment before. The steps, the tunnel, where were, they, were where they should be. What is going on? Nico wondered. He remembered an old stereoscope his mother had owned back in the 1930s. At the time, it had seemed like magic to Nico. He would put his eyes in the view mask as his mother changed 3D photo cards at the other end of a guide stick. One moment, Nico was in Paris. Then, in the blink of an eye, he was at the Great Wall of China. Then the Grand Canyon. Nico felt like that now, stuck in a stereoscope he couldn't control, and he wasn't sure who was changing the cards. Are you okay? Will asked. He looked panicky there for a second. You, you weren't there. Nothing was, it was just me in the darkness. In the purple glow of Nico's blade, Will's face seemed to float in and out of focus. But I've been here the whole time. I didn't see anything change. Nico tried to think. It wasn't easy with the adrenaline buzzing through his system. Something doesn't want us to make it to the underworld, he decided. Will, I think you were right from the start. Can you... Do the glowing thing. Maybe a better light source will help us see what's actually going on. Okay, said Will, his voice trembling ever so slightly. Whatever you say. His skin began to glow like rice paper lit from behind a candle. Nico found the sight both beautiful and unsettling, as if his boyfriend were about to burst into flames. They descended once more. For the third attempt, the dim light of the underworld began to shine at the end of the long passage, but it seemed to happen much more quickly this time. Maybe Will's glow was helping? Nico could make out the roar of the river sticks below. Finally, the steps gave way to the uneven ground of the cavern, and Nico reached for Will's hand. Don't let go of me, he said, holding his Stygian iron sword before him. No matter what happens. Will clutched him tightly. I got you. Nico managed a few steps towards the river's edge, and that's when a wave of exhaustion rolled over him and an uncontrollable desire to curl up and sleep. It was an unusual sensation for him because he wasn't much of a sleeper. He'd spent many nights, he'd spent many a night at Camp Half-Blood wandering the grounds instead of lying in bed, anything to avoid the dreams he'd been having. And if his dreams in the mortal world were so terrible, he thought with a shudder, what would they be like in the underworld? Will, keep your eyes open, he said. Don't close them. Why do I feel so sleepy? Will's grip on Nico's hand was already loosening. Should we rest? Nico forced himself to look across the river to the black ramparts of Erebos. Was this his father's doing? Had Hades somehow discovered that Nico was trying to cross his realm and deliberately enter Tartarus? Maybe this was his way of saying, no way, Jose. We can't rest yet, said Nico. We have to follow the river and make our way down those cliffs. It's not too far. Then we can find the troglodytes and rest, I promise. Thump. Will's hand slipped out of Nico's, and when Nico turned, he found that his boyfriend, whose illumination was much dimmer, had fallen to the ground again. No, Nico cried. Not here, please. I can't, said Will. I can't be here. 
Please, get up, begged Nico, his arms under Will's armpits, trying to lift him, but it was hopeless. This place, said Will, it's not meant for someone like me. Do you need your sun lamp? Nico's heart raced faster. Why is this happening so suddenly? Nico looked up and, no, no. Darkness was seeping into his field of vision. The world around him, the cavern walls, Erebos, the river Styx, began to fade away. Not again, Nico called out. Stop it. When he looked down at Will, his boyfriend's internal light had extinguished, and he seemed to be completely asleep on the... What? The grass. Will was curled up on a bed of wet grass. With a rising wave of horror, Nico scanned his surroundings. They were back in Central Park. Again. A voice floated through the trees. Help me, Nico. Bob. It was Bob. Why won't you help me, Nico? Nico screamed in frustration. His eyes squeezed tight, and then 